As a son of a Portuguese teacher, my interest in books was set to trigger at some point in my early childhood, and I guess I can say that's correct. Although it might not have been the first book I've read, The Little Prince by Antoine de saint exupéry is the first book I remember consciously reading, and thinking of the experience as magical, even for a little five-year-old me. You see, one of these days, while I was boring, while I was bored during philosophy class, and thinking of a topic to talk about on this very presentation, that little children's book came to mind, and I thought, hey, I kind of like books. I like The Little Prince. I think it could be a good thing. And it finally stuck. So, my name is Aias, and this is... Books? Why books? It's a great question. Um, so, since we are already talking about it, why don't we discuss The Little Prince, and why it isn't just some simple children's book? Well, first of all, the plot revolves around an unnamed protagonist who's stranded in the middle of the Sahara Desert. There, he meets a little child who claims to be from, claims to be from outer space. They then become close friends, sharing their life stories and their travelings and their, you know, trips throughout the world. Or the universe, in the prince's case, because, you know, he's from outer space. This plot, although it may seem childish and even simple at first, is actually quite a great one. You see, it's not what's explicit on it that's great. But who's to say that the little prince, the little child, isn't actually just a metaphor for self-reflection? Since we have a protagonist that's, you know, stranded in the middle of the Sahara Desert, facing insane heat during the day, insane cold during the night, probably dehydrated and starving, it wouldn't be weird for him to hallucinate and start thinking about his self-reflection, about who he has become, especially since a running theme th throughout the book seems to be how can we go from being created as creative as child to being boring and bland adults? With the, you know, the biggest example being the hat, which is, actu which is actually a snake that's swallowing an elephant. So, what amazes me the most is that we are able to perceive what the book wants to tell us, even though it is not explicit. And that's something that, you know, kind of comes off as minor or kind of automatic, but it's really not. It's called interpretation. It is a skill that we acquire through ironically, reading a lot, in which our brain assimilates, relates information that we know, that we know about, that we have from our life, with, that, with the things we are reading. And then we can create this, let's say, web of ideas through which we can express what we feel and what we think about that. And the magical thing about interpretation is that it's different for, for every person. I might interpret the story in a way, but you know, my brother maybe won't interpret it the same way. He might think of the children as just a godly entity. Who knows? It's up to you. And I mean, The Little Prince is really good. I really like it. And I think a core criteria for that is immersion. You see, a good book is not just a book that, you know, is good, it's, it is, it is written in a, in a good way. A good book immerses you, it, 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 sti it stimulates your imagination. What do, you, what do I mean by that? Well, let's take the horror genre as an example. The reason why you feel scared when you read Stephen King's The Shining or Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven, which is one of my favorite poems, is not that the text itself is scary. I mean, it may be for you, I am not afraid of words, I don't have that kind of phobia, but if you do, yeah. Sorry for you. Anyways, um, the text itself is not scary. What's really scary is what our mind puts us. We feel immersed in the story. We feel like we are part of it. One of my favorite examples is a book by a little-known author, um, a, not, a not really known author, called Lorenzo Ginelli. The book, titled The Devourer, talks about a little children with abusive parents, that creates monsters, and then they come to life. It's pretty weird, but it's also, like, surprisingly good. It's one of my favorite horror stories, mainly because it was one of the first I've read, but because it emerges you, it makes you, it puts you in the shoes of the protagonist, of the antagonist. You feel, their, you feel that eerie sense of anxiety, of fear, of sheer panic, when the enemy gets close and you're like, oh, that's a good book. Yeah. Read it if you have the time. It's, it's really good.
and it makes you feel immersed. You see, immersion is really important. Immersion is when you put yourself in the, in the character's shoes. I already said that. I know I'm repeating myself. However, we have met, we have talked about two of the core criteria for a good book. A good storyline that makes you interpret it. Immersion, which makes you feel as if you're part of the book. And we are just missing one. Can you guess what it is? Yeah, I guess you could. See, a book may be really well written, like with perfect grammar. It may be as, as immersive as a book can be. But would it really be fun if, there, if the protagonist and most of the characters were, you know, one-dimensional cardboard cutouts with absolutely no character development at all? Yes, I'm looking at you, Fifty Shades of Grey and Twilight. What would you? Okay, so um, continuing, that was a little fun. Anyways, um, you see, to quote on one of my favorite YouTubers, the Cosmon of Variety Hour, his channel is really good, you should watch it, you should watch it. Um, this type of book may be called something like an ERJB. ERJB stands for Evil Robot Jeff Bridges, in reference to the first Iron Man film villain. He, you see, he's evil just for the sake of being evil. He has no character development at all. He's just static. And I think that's a problem that many books can fall into. However, as a Brazilian, I think it's pretty fair that one of my favorite examples for demonstrating what, a, what good character development can do is a book by a Brazilian. His the book's title is Capitães da Areia by Jorge Amado, who is one of Brazil's most prominent and famous writers of all time. The book is centered around a group of street children, street children which is a sad reality in Brazil, but you know, we have to deal with it. I mean, we shouldn't have to, but off topic. Um, and you know, it's a kind of setup where you wouldn't normally root for the characters. Especially after you read it and you see that on a daily basis they commit theft, they murder, they rape, they steal drugs, they do drugs. It's, it's just... It's uncanny, the amount of, you know, terrible things they do for a living. But that's where it's at. They might be criminals, but when you take a look at them individually, their personalities, their life stories, the things that they went through and that they want to do in the future, you feel sympathetic for them. That's what's called empathy, emotion. You feel the emotional weight that their character's story and backstory puts on your shoulders. As an example, Pirulito is one of the most aggressive boys of the whole, uh, let's say, team. And he wants to be a father. Not a father like in, in family, but he wants to be a priest. Which is pretty, you know, unexpected. But you also feel commotion, you feel the commotion behind his, his voice when he, when he prays every night to the little statue that he keeps of Mother Mary. You want another example? Well, Professor. This is one's pretty mad. Professor is the only one who can read in the entire group. And his dream is to become an artist, more specifically, a painter. By living with these children for weeks, you know, the time you read the book depends, but I'm talking about in book time, for weeks, and getting to know their feelings, seeing how they feel about their situation, seeing how they live, even though it's a hard life. It's kind of hard not to feel empathy towards them. Towards them, it it is kind of a humanizing process. I know I'm talking way too much about this book, but I know it's my favorite. It's one of my favorite books of all time. If not my favorite, you should really read it. It's it's a life changing experience. And yeah, basically empathy. It's good. It, the thing about empathy is that you need to be empathetic, like empathetic, but not too much. Otherwise, you may just get lost in character. And I see way too many books in which you don't feel empathy for the characters at all. Yes, I'm talking about Twilight again. Bella is just a terrible protagonist. But you can leave that out if you want. Anyways, um, I guess the point where I'm trying to get at is books are really good. They're a valid and resourceful source of entertainment. You can read them, you know, for fun. You can read them if you want to learn about something. You can read them if you just want to have a nice experience. Books in general are part of life, and they should be appre more appreciated for what, they, for what they are and what they represent in our society. 
especially nowadays where access to information is really easy and really quick too. We don't need to carry books with us to read them, we can just download them on our, on our Kindle or on our phones. And look, we always have our phones on us, come on, don't like me. So, what I'm trying to get at is, if you have the opportunity, read these books. But not just the, one that I, not just the ones that I talked about today. Yes, I know I talked about Captain Jareia, The Little Prince, The Devourer, and etc. But you should, all, um, but my recommendations especially are 1984, Ensaio sobre a Cegueira, and uh, Admirável Mundo Novo, I forgot the, the, the title, Wonderful New World, something like that. It's really, and they are books that not only provide entertainment, but they but also change your cognition, your cognition, they change your view on life. I want to be, I want to finish this talk by thanking everyone and saying that please, please, don't, 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 don't read on read, please read the books.